everyone, it's Kristen from Wild Birds Unlimited, Berry and New Market, and I have the need, the need for bees. And what I mean by that is, it's time to release my mason bee cocoons. So I thought I'd show you how I do it. It is a beautiful spring day here today. It's actually pretty warm and humid, which is why my hair is not really cooperating for the camera, but we'll work through that. And so that means, you know, it's a good time to start thinking about releasing bees. Now I have been waiting a little bit longer than I normally do. We're a little later in May than I would like to release my bees, but hey, the blossoms really haven't been there yet this year. So now the blossoms are just getting ready to pop. I have apple trees and cherry trees and blueberry plants that are just getting ready to open. I also have some early spring veggies that I started indoors that are getting ready to flower, as well as my natives. So some of my trees like my service berry are getting ready to flower and choke cherries almost coming out. So it is a really, really good time to think about putting out bees. And here in Ontario, you wanna release your bees before June 1st for them to complete their life cycle. And that's for most places. If you live further north in Ontario, you may need to delay your release a little bit depending on the weather. But for most places in Ontario, you wanna get them out by June the 1st. Alrighty? So, before you even think about releasing bees, you have to make sure you're ready for them, which means getting your bee house ready and out there and your nesting material all set up. So that's what I've done the last couple days. Took my bee house out of storage and filled it with nesting material. Nice and clean, ready to go. So I have three different types of nesting material. I have the reusable trays here and they're filled with uh, paper tubes. And then I also have reeds and more paper tubes. So the bees have three different options that they can choose from to nest in. And so I'm hoping that that means they're gonna be super successful this year. Now, the other thing you might notice about my bee house is that there's some different colors on those nesting trays. So there's actually three different colors on the nesting trays. It's like a light brown, a dark brown, and a black. And I've kind of just thrown in my reeds and nesting tubes kind of haphazardly, um, made sure they were facing the right direction and just kind of put them in there. And there's method to my madness. So two things that female bees use when trying to figure out where their nesting tubes are is color and any kind of like identifying landmark that they can see that will help distinguish their nesting tube from another nesting tube. So on bee houses, it's really common to see different colors, for example, so they can figure that out. Or sometimes there's markings, like you'll see if they're wooden nesting trays, some burn marks made into the wood that help the bees figure out which is their nesting tube. And in terms of reeds and paper tubes, kind of placing them in a haphazard pattern um, and some slightly stick out, maybe a little bit more than others do, and that's okay. They don't all have to be to the back of the house. That's gonna help your bees figure out which is their tube. And if you watch a female mason bee go into the wrong tube, it's pretty funny because sometimes she gets chased out by another female bee who's like, hey, what gives? Why are you in my nesting tube? And so she figures out pretty quickly it's not hers, um, but it does help the bees to have some kind of a landmark in there. So I've kind of mixed up the reeds a little bit with the paper tubes, let some of them just stand out a little bit more. So hopefully my bees can be like, hey, that's my tube, second from the right of the long reed and that'll help them in finding where their babies are. Alrighty, so I have my humidity here and this is what I've stored my cocoons in all winter long in the fridge. And also one other really important thing for mason bees before you release them, make sure you have the clay out. So you could probably see that in the bottom right there, part of the camera. That's the clay that they use to nest with. So that's super important. So not only do you need nesting material, you need clay. And so as the name indicates, mason bee, they use that clay to build their nesting chambers and actually cap them. So they put one egg, they cap the chamber with mud, then they lay another egg, cap the chamber with mud all the way until they get to the end of the nesting tube. And that's usually about five or six eggs per nesting tube. So I have quite a bit of cocoons this year, which is awesome. I had a good haul in the fall. My bee houses were really productive. So I have quite a few to release, but I do have multiple bee houses. So I'm not gonna put them all in here, but um, I will choose some to go in here and I'm gonna do a mixture of males and females. And I'm gonna show you how to sort through which ones are the male cocoons versus the female cocoons. So you can actually differentiate them just by size. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So here's a female mason bee cocoon. 
and here's the male. So quite a bit of a size difference there. Female's quite a bit bigger. So you're gonna see a mixture of sizes in your cocoons as well. So it is a good idea if you have multiple bee houses that you put a few of each in your bee houses to make sure you get males and females at each one. All right, so my bee house has this wonderful attic space, which I absolutely love because I put my cocoons up there and that's where the bees hatch out from. And so what I do is I just get a little, well, a few cocoons at a time. So I have a little handful there and I just kind of place them in gently and then just push them back with my fingers to the very back of the bee house as far as I can go. And that's gonna help avoid birds getting at them. I also actually do have a little homemade um, wire mesh guard too that I sometimes use on top of the bee houses just to keep birds from getting in there. I have some really strange house friends that do some weird things and they also like to investigate my bee houses and nest in my bee houses. So I have to be a little bit more cautious. Um, so I do have some homemade guards that I will put on afterwards as well. It's just wire mesh that goes over top so the birds can't get in. All right, a few more cocoons here, making sure to mix them up. So this humidity has been awesome. This chamber keeps them nice and humid all winter and then it's super easy to keep an eye on them and watch them as they're hibernating. And then you just add a little bit of water and that'll keep them nice and humid. So I'm pushing them all the way to the back here. Ta-da, there we go. It's as easy as that. And now my bees will hatch possibly right away. So as soon as the sun hits the bee house, I'm gonna start hearing snap, cackle, pop, that rice crispy sound coming from my bee house as they try and chew through the cocoons. And usually the males exit first, they really need to get out there first. So the boys are very quick, they hatch and they leave the house so that they can ambush the females once they've hatched for mating purposes. And then the job of the males is more or less done and the female continues the life cycle in the Mason Bee household. So the males get out really quickly. Um, don't be surprised if you put them out on a really sunny day and you start to hearing them hatch almost immediately. Or don't be surprised if you actually see males already hatched in your bee cocoon box, okay? Sometimes when you open the box, there's already bees hatched out in there and those are the boys. The girls can take their time. They can take about two weeks, maybe a little bit longer after you've put out the cocoons for them to hatch. So it is totally normal to have some hatch right away and others take a little bit more time. Totally normal. And there you have it. That's pretty much all there is to it. You just put your bee cocoons out. You wait for the weather to cooperate, for the blossoms to be ready. That's why I love my bees. They really help me pollinate. And then you let nature take its course. And I really will enjoy watching these bees work and nest over the next couple weeks. They'll be out for about six to eight weeks. And in that time, I'm sure I'll have a lot more trees ready for pollination and a lot more veggies ready for pollination. So we have a, about almost two months worth of pollination service that they're gonna provide from when I put the bees out and they hatch, which is awesome. But then after that period goes by, I won't really see them again until the fall, until I begin harvesting the cocoons. So it's a short time, but I enjoy them while they're here and I really appreciate all the pollination services they provide. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching, take care and enjoy your mason bees.